All righty, everybody, we are live on Facebook. Just give us one moment so we could jump uh, live on uh, Instagram. Instagram here. And we are live on Instagram as well. Hello, hello, Instagram world yes, and Facebook Friday. world. Welcome to Window Treatment Friday Live. Today is episode number 107. And today we are talking about Roman shades and some of the basics of the Roman shades. We are titling this episode Roman Shades 101. <laughs> and in just a second, I will be joined Ooh. by my friend. Ah, wait by my friend um kim um from window works okay i just viewed your request i just accepted Perfect. your girlfriend are, are you coming on okay cool yep, i'm here i'm okay, looking awesome. like a little floating head but give us one you're second fine everything fine. will get adjusted <laughs> welcome welcome everybody all right and while i am hooking myself up here on instagram mm -hmm. do you want to tell our listeners what we're talking about today again yes welcome everybody and if you're just joining us now today is episode number 107 and we are going to be discussing roman shades and it's kind of like a roman shade 101 tutorial that we're going to be giving you today so welcome and thank you for joining and Vita is going to be joining me here, so I just don't look like a floating head. <laughs> okay, and it's it's circling, so I will be there in just a second. So here I am, almost. Ta -da! Yay! Hello, hello, my friend. How are hello, you? Friend, how are you? How are you feeling? I'm feeling well. I know you went public, so do you want to tell <laughs> sure. everyone, please? <laughs> sure. Well, thank you, everyone. Everyone, you kind of see me from like here up. But if you have not uh, heard the news, I am pregnant. I'm, I'm 21 weeks pregnant with a little girl. Yes. Oh, my uh, gosh. Due Congratulations, thank my friend. You, thank you. Uh, due December 13th. So I'm going to have a little holiday baby. Mm -hmm. So I'm super, super excited. And we are so uh, excited for you. you. <laughs> so excited you. for you. Yeah. Oh, it's going to be wonderful. It's an amazing so, journey. <laughs> yes. So enjoy. Enjoy. How are you Thank feeling? You. I'm feeling good this week. I mean, my back hurts a little bit, you know, starting with that whole thing, but uh, yeah. she's yeah. just starting to like really pop and show. So like, Really? It. Yeah. Oh yeah. my so gosh. So you can else, no longer hide about no, 21 no, weeks. No. I'm surprised that you were able to hide it at all. <laughs> I, I'm yeah, I'm still still wearing like, you know, right some of my regular jeans and regular tops. But wow, that's yeah, I've amazing. Had some, I'm I've pretty had some sure customers. I popped it like eight weeks. <laughs> <laughs> I had some customers look at me. One customer looked at me um the other day in the showroom and she's like and I said, no, no, I'm pregnant. I'm pregnant. <laughs> She's like, because I saw you a couple of weeks ago. And I was like, yeah, she decided to make her appearance. So <laughs> That's awesome. That's awesome. I'm so happy for Thank you, Kim. You. So, Thank so you. sincerely, honestly, Thank just you. like from the bottom of my heart, I'm so happy. I, I think I've been telling you for years now, you need to get a baby. <laughs> <off the baby. laughs> I know you've been advocating for me to get a baby. That well, you guys don't know it, but Kim is like mm -hmm. the hardest working window <laughs> treatment specialist in the entire window treatment industry. I mean, she works at 11 p.m. at, I don't know, 4 a.m. Saturday, Sundays. And I, I think I, I heard a story of you falling asleep with the computer on your lap while putting together estimates. So so that in that yeah. context, I'm like, Kim, you need to get yourself a baby. That's going to stop really fast. <laughs> and yeah, she's not even here yet. And she's already slowed me down so like I get well, home from happened. work and I'm like whoo I don't think I should be calculating anything right now <laughs> so <laughs> oh again congratulations oh. that's amazing thank you thank super you. super thank happy you, for you all right let me just straighten my out a little bit all right all right so, so let's talk about another exciting topic and that is Roman shade. Roman shade. Woo. <laughs> um, and this is going to be a kind of a Roman shades 101. Mm -hmm. So for this would be good for anyone who doesn't really know what Roman shades are and what do you eat it with. Yeah. <laughs> so, so let us start with showing you the four main styles of Roman shades. Mm -hmm. There are some other variations to them. We'll just leave it to Roman shades 201 or 301. Mm -hmm. Today, we'll just talk about some of the basic styles and they're pictured here. Oh, no, no echo, echo for Vida. Oh, thank God. <laughs> and here's the thing, doing the same thing every Friday. 
And some days there's echo and some days there's no echo. But Gina, no. thank you for, for, for letting me know. Cause I was just like on the edge of my seat. For I know. I was, I, was, I, was, echoing. I didn't want to, I didn't want to ask. I, didn't I know. I was afraid like, to ask. Too. Like, how's the sound today, everyone? But cool. Thank you. And thank you, Gina, for always supporting us. She's like our, one of our biggest cheerleaders. So thank yeah, you yeah, that's for coming wonderful. on. Yes. <laughs> thank you. Thank you. Thank you. So, okay. So the four basic styles of Roman shades are these. There is a um, classic straight style, which is what you're seeing on your very left. Then there is a hobbled, which means that um, it, it comes off the board and it kind of comes in like these cascades, Fold. if you will, like folds, cascading permanent fold. motion, permanent folds. Uh -huh. And then the third style is relaxed. And it is similar in the way to the first style, which is the classic straight. The only difference is at the bottom, instead of being perfectly straight, it has a little smile to it. And so unlike drapery panels, which we do not like smiling, we do like our Roman shades relaxed Roman shades to smile at the bottom. And it just adds a little bit of a, a romantic look, a little bit of an elegant look, relaxed mm -hmm. look, that sort of thing. And then the fourth main style is um, London Roman shade. And what makes it different from everything else is it has pleats on the sides of the shade. And it's an inverted pleat, which means that the fabric is um, inside the pleat and and the two sides of fabric where uh, the other the remaining fabric i should say were were put together creating a pleat on the back um and what it results in these pleats is the way it looks on the bottom and that is there's a scoop which is similar to relaxed but then it only scoops from pleat to pleat and then um, on the side of each pleat it what's called fish tails down so it has like these little um tail fish tails or, yeah tails um that come off of it so these are your four basic styles of roman shade yes now, interesting fact, Kim, do you want to share what Stephanie was able to um, pull for us? Something that I actually never knew. Oh, what, what is that? What oh, is okay. Oh, I didn't, uh, I don't, I didn't you, even you, know. You didn't, didn't see it yet. Okay. No, so I it's going to be a very interesting fact for you as well. Okay, so do you know why Roman shade is called a Roman shade? No, I don't. And not like a Ukrainian shade or a Portuguese shade. Why is it? Well, I, I, I shall tell you. <laughs> Educate me. I, I would like to get a little fun fact this morning, too. <laughs> fun fact Fun fact of this uh, WTF live show is this. A Roman shade is referred to as Roman because it was um, first started, first used as a shade in ancient Rome. Huh. And it was done during the building of the Colosseum. Okay. And so the craftsmen and the builders and everybody who worked on the structure, uh, because of so much dust and debris from the stone, um, they would put uh, damp cloths on the windows. Hmm. And it is that damp cloth that would catch a lot of dust. Oh. And then the ancient Romans discovered that not only does this damp cloth catches dust and debris from all of their grinding and cutting and everything else with the stone but it also protects them from the sun and it also um uh, cuts down on the heat ah so all of those practical points and it is the ancient rome's way way back during the building of the Colosseum, discovered that this piece of fabric can be used on the windows and create all this functionality. So that's what, that's the kind of the origin <laughs> of, of, of the Roman shade. Roman shade. Well, then yep. there you go. I, I learned a cool fun fact. Interesting. Isn't that so, cool? That's right. So, I, so let's credit goes to Stephanie for pulling it for yeah. us. I had no idea, but I thought this was super interesting. And um, yes, it's been around for many, 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 many centuries. <laughs> so like anything else, like any trend, it starts, you know, it, it like everything it's it's cycles so you know mm -hmm. when you hear someone say well roman shades are very contemporary we can say actually <laughs> like, okay <laughs> no they are not <laughs> exactly exactly um let's talk about your project here okay so this actually believe it or not is 
a um, flat Roman shade. It's not a relaxed. So it what, looks what, relaxed. I thought it was. I relaxed. know. Yeah. What, what's happening here is it is a very sheer fabric, mm -hmm. and it's causing these little waves. Okay. So I often we get this a lot, where um, especially when someone. Um, shows us like a project that we did they're like we want it to look like this where it has these like tiny little swoops uh -huh. and uh we tell them okay that's not a relax it's because the fabric is like a gauzy linen and so with mm -hmm. the pickups it can't like there's no way to make it crisp and straight so this is what's going to happen mm -hmm. i actually had to um figure out a way because a designer really loved this whole like swoopy style okay. and we had to figure out a way how to do that with stiffer fabrics in order for it to create these like little swoops so, so how did you do it with the stiffer fabric we didn't put the weighted bar at the bottom uh -huh. on the bottom okay. hem to like okay. help so it wouldn't structure it there was different i mean it didn't come out like this right right um yeah, the, so this look is very um indicative of a yeah. gauzy sheer fabric yeah so um and i told him that i said listen like there's going to be some where it's just going to kind of look like looks like we're getting there. But um, yeah, so this is what happens when um, you have the ability, like when it's not a very structured fabric. Mm -hmm. So it will happen a lot on these like linens on something that's 100 percent linen that doesn't have a lot of structure mm -hmm. on a sheer any type of thing that isn't a stiff fabric mm -hmm. this is what will happen when you do a roman shade you're going to get this like little swoopy not very wow. tailored look so that's is i i lined um this is a yeah i mean this project's probably a good 15 20 years old um i so it's hard think to it tell. it's hard to tell and this was something that we did for sharon drasnan interiors in a lobby um luann did it i just know the picture from from yeah. reference and things i believe it is lined but it's lined with a wall sheer right, because right. it is what a i would have guessed space. as well yeah it, it is lined with the wall sheer so what you're seeing like um so it, it is a, because of the size of the shade and i know what people are probably thinking it's a sheer why do we see seams and things like that it's, um, I don't believe it was 118 inch goods. And because of the size, the width and the length, that's why you're getting those uh, vertical seams there. Mm -hmm. But again, it's like the seams were lined up with the mullions with the intention mm -hmm. of that. So, um, but yeah, but this is not a relaxed, like if you can tell, like it's, it's hard to tell in the picture, but the bottom flap. Um, Did you put... use weighed bars on this just at the bottom or at each set of rings? we just use it at the bottom we don't use it like on the unless you're doing a flat stitched or a batten back batten front shade depending on you know potato potato what you call it um what do you do vita on so your I, actually, I i have um an example to show you let me um move to Perfect. the next slide so right here look so here is um a roman shade mm -hmm. it is straight mm -hmm. it is made out of sheer fabric mm -hmm and we used a rib at each mm -hmm. set of rings so that goes to the earlier question and i actually yeah. brought a sample of what a rib is yep. essentially it let me show you it looks like this it's okay. a fiberglass um, dowel stick <laughs> yeah it's a dowel it's, yeah. it's super um thin it's about a quarter of an inch thin or so it's very 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 light um, and it's it's great to use in Roman shades that are not made of really heavy fabrics. Now, for a sheer Roman shade, we actually wouldn't even use um, a rib that is white like this. We would use something that is clear. Clear. And even though we would use something that is clear, because of the shadow variations, you still see that those lines at every yeah whatever five inches or so it's so, it's about four and a half and i know this because of child safety laws i mean right. remember that's remember right. back in the day when you used to like with the hobbled roman shades where we mm -hmm. could be like we want a 10 inch scoop or a six yeah. inch scoop we, yeah. we were we had flexibility that's right sorry crew we no longer have flexibility yeah. we have to abide by child safety laws and we have to it's only four and a half inches in between 
the That's rings right. or so. It, it has to be tighter. So unfortunately, yep. we can't make the folds any bigger. <laughs> so, um, so, and, and to, so, so I wanted to show yeah. our listeners how you can use the sheer fabric. And you, if you don't put the ribs anywhere throughout the shade, you would get the look that Kim was showing you. Mm -hmm. um, I can... I can show it to you here, right here, yep. uh, like that. So so this is the look that you get. So it's perfectly straight. There is no shadow variations because of the ribs. However, you also get those uh, swoopy lines yeah. on the bottom. So those, that, that's what happens. And when you don't have the ribs, whether it's a sheer Roman shade or um, a Roman that you are doing with uh, fabric, any type of fabric, the ribs help it so you don't have to dress a flat Roman shade. That's right. So, um, and so I also have this video for us. Um, I I recorded a video of Boris, our seamster, mm -hmm. sewing rings onto the back of the Roman shade. And so I thought it would be a good idea to show our viewers, mm -hmm. listeners, on uh, as as to what happens in the back of the Roman shade and mm -hmm. how is it actually like gliding up and folding up. And so what happens at either every rib, which is what you're seeing there, the ribs are sewn inside the lining there or at every set of rings using Kim's example where she did not have ribs but either way ribs or no ribs you need to sew in these teeny tiny little rings and it is through these teeny tiny little mm -hmm. rings that oh, that was Boris saying hello let me run this again and it is through these teeny tiny little rings that you have the um, ladders going down mm -hmm. and it is through them that or through rings and with the ladders that the shade folds up oh. and it folds at the at the place where that ring, ring. line is yeah where the ring is sewn that's right so I also wanted to show this video to show you guys how laborious this process is. So yes. he's already actually created the shade. He put in the lining. He did the hems. He did the ribs. He did a lot of things here already. And some of it is done by hand. Mm -hmm. Well, the sewing of the rings, it, it's the only way is to do it by hand. Mm -hmm. And this happened to be a really, uh, let me see, why am I, why am, why am I going up? <laughs> Hold on. Okay. There you go. So um, this was a very small shade. You can see that yes. there are, I think, three columns of rings, which probably the shade is maybe 30 inches or so. If you have a really large shade, that is a lot of rings that you need to sew in by hand. So yep. that's why Roman shades, custom Roman shades, um, I've, I, it's a, it's an investment. It's mm -hmm. definitely, it, has it takes a lot of labor it takes a lot of time a lot of hand sewing so all of that of course translates then into a certain level of cost right because that's what i often find is the shock of the labor cost for mm -hmm. romans when you're when you have i don't know um vita if sometimes you're pricing out a pair of you know panels versus mm -hmm. uh, a roman shade oftentimes the cost to make, not often, always, the cost, the labor cost to make a Roman is going to be significantly higher yes. um, than, say, a pair of panels. But this is why. Um, yeah. And what to, to Vita's point is you're looking at a small shade that only has um, three columns of pickups and maybe mm -hmm. about, I don't know, five or six rows mm -hmm. of pickups where um, we just had a shade that we installed probably about 12 years ago that we repaired for a client, um, a hobbled Roman shade. And we had to sew, re -sew, we just re -sewed all the rings on for her because a couple of them popped mm -hmm. and, and whatnot. And um, just the labor of re -sewing all the rings, Billy was here on a Saturday morning mm -hmm. and it took a couple it took about like two two hours or so sure. to just yeah, sew rings on, and um, so yeah, and that and the shade was already made. It's just that you know it was an older shade with sun and it, you know um, right. and wear and tear, uh, but the the face fabric and everything else was fine. But yeah, it it, it is the the thing that um, the reason why from a, a labor standpoint yeah. that the cost is higher, and and also from from the cost stamp to to 
make another note about the cost standpoint is oftentimes people think that the Roman shade would cost less because mm -hmm. of the fabric and they say okay we can't afford we don't have the budget for the drapery panels because the fabric is too expensive let's convert it to Roman shades and use less fabric mm -hmm. and yes that is true that you will use a lot less fabric on a Roman shade well on a flat Roman shade not so yeah. much on the hobbled oh. but on the flat <laughs> Roman shade you'll use a lot less fabric than drapery panels however it also kind of becomes a wash because to our earlier point, there is a lot that goes into it with the labor and the labor is a lot higher on Roman mm -hmm. shades than it is on the drapes. Yes. All right, moving right along. Um, okay, so this is a project that we did and this is an example of the hobbled Roman shade um, with a wide stripe. So <laughs> oftentimes when you start to um, do Romans outside of it being a flat or even a relaxed and you get into this there's um this pattern is was it's a vertical stripe so it wasn't it's not as complicated but when you're dealing with something that's like a bigger floral or even i'm gonna date myself a little bit here a toile fabric <laughs> once you start to interrupt the pattern mm -hmm. as such that's something that you have to take into consideration mm -hmm. and something that you have to um to think about right when you're doing this but this is an example of so unlike the two previous um slides that we showed you where they were both flat what you're seeing here is a hobbled roman has permanent folds mm -hmm. so it automatically has these folds so when it's down you don't have anything that's flat um i don't know about you vita but i've been having a request uh, like a, that there's been like a little bump in hobbled no, Roman shape. Not for, for us. us. No, yeah. it's, it's all straight, straight and simple, understated yeah. all the way. <laughs> I don't know if the tides are turning. I'm seeing a, like it's going like- Ooh, are some... swags next? No, oh God, please. <laughs> Watch it, watch it, they I, will come back. I know. And you're gonna I, love them. <laughs> I know. Um, but you know, we, we've, we we're doing a couple, we've had a couple of requests for a hobbled Roman in the last couple of months. So, um, so yeah, so this is just another way to treat a window. It is a little bit more on the traditional side mm -hmm. because you do have the folds That's right. again, you know, 10, 12 years ago when I, or even 13 years ago, when I started at window works, we did have the flexibility to say how many, like what the spacing was for the folds. Mm -hmm. um, now we can't. So this is what it's going to look like. You're going to have this type so of are pretty um, small. Yeah, you're going to have a lot of folds. So that's something to consider when you're dealing with a longer window. Mm -hmm. um, this window here, I think it was not like, it wasn't anything longer than um, you quoted a swag in the last month. Oh, yeah. Yes. I'm excited for you. I like swags. I am. I'm a big lobbyist for swags to come back. Yes, I am. <laughs> I've gone on record many times. <laughs> Kim's about to like clobber me I'm over like, the head every time I say that. <laughs> next, you're going to say bullion fringe. I'm okay with bullion. Like we could do it in a cool way. If, if you could come up with a cool way to do a swag, then I will be on board. But it's just that like it, it will come back in the coolest way possible. I don't know uh, exactly when, I don't know exactly how, but everything that's old is new again and everything uh, is. is cyclical. So I am positive that swags will come back. I just hope that it's I in my lifetime. <laughs> uh, but yeah, so this is another example of a, a hobbled Roman um, with, uh, with a pattern. So it's not something that, but that's something to keep in mind that when you're dealing with the pattern, this happens to just be a vertical stripe. So the, um, at the folds, the pattern could easily Breaks. line up. Mm -hmm. um, but when you're dealing with something that's a little bit of a bigger pattern, mm -hmm. that's something to keep in mind is that the pattern will not match. That's right. Like when, it, it will break up. Yeah. You're yeah. going to like, we, we had that with a toile where, you know, Luann, I, I still remember this. This is when I first started at Window Works back in 2008. She was describing to the designer when, the, when we could again, pick the fold. She's like, if I do this here, we're going to be chopping the heads off of some of these figures on the toile pattern. Yeah. And she just said, no, it's going to look organic. It's going to be fine, darling. Let's uh -huh. just do it. And <laughs> we were like, okay. 
No problem. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. And when it came out, was it okay? Did it she looked, stick with it? It looked story? great. Yeah, it okay, looked great. Good. And it wasn't, it just like, it's just one of those things mm -hmm. that you have to set expectations before something gets made. That's right. I so. also wanted to mention that Hobbled Roman Shade uses a lot more fabric. Yes. I mean, upwards of three times more fabric than a flat Roman Shade. Mm -hmm. So the reason for that is if you think about it, a flat is, you know, it is what it is. It's just flat on the window. With the Hobbled, for every fold, it needs to go down, then go up, and then come down again. So it travels the same distance three times, essentially. Yeah. Now you don't have to make the fold as deep as the entire length of it. Maybe it's like a little um, up and then down, um, but either either way, it is at least twice as much fabric and it's upwards of three times as much fabric, depending how um, deep your folds are. So yeah. this is something now, it's a, it's a great look for the right home, for the right environment. I don't do a lot of them here in the Northeast in the Philadelphia area, maybe down South. This is the style that is yeah. more prevalent and will, will look a lot better. So um, that's something for you guys to think about and consider. Yes. All right. I want to show a flat Roman shade. Okay. Yes. So this was one of our projects. This was done for an amazing designer here in the Philadelphia. She, her name is Christina Hank. The name of the company is Hank Design. And this was a small Roman shade that we installed. This is inside mounted Roman shade. So I've just introduced a slightly new concept here. We've been talking about the style of Roman shade, but I also want to show you and tell you how it's mounted. And this particular one is mounted inside the window, pretty flush with the window um opening so mm -hmm. on the left you're seeing the shade in its open position on the right you're seeing the shade in its full down position on the left it's not it fully open it's about halfway on the window open so which is kind of typical how a lot of shades are left if they are not um, being used all the time because i find that our customers and it came about you but they like to have um, the pattern showing on the mm -hmm. half of the window and then the other half kind of being lifted up to show the fullness of it right now, of course they have the flexibility of going all the way up and have a much smaller stack or going all the way down which is what you're seeing on the right hand side and really showcasing this whole pattern yes so just like what i was saying before you actually on a flat roman shade with this gorgeous pattern you're able to appreciate it without it being interrupted once you do a hobbled roman shade this whole pattern is going to get interrupted that's right. And that's and that's something to just keep in mind when you're thinking about which style of Roman you want to go with and your fabric selection. Yep. Um, and then to go back to this picture, I wanted to show you how this flat Roman shade is mounted on the outside of the window. Mm -hmm. So this particular one is mounted onto the frame. We wanted to preserve a little bit of the frame around the shade. We didn't want to go all the way on the outside, outside of the window, but it's definitely not mounted inside. This particular mm -hmm. window was not deep enough at all. It had no depth whatsoever. So we had to, we decided to mount on the flat portion Art. of the frame. Mm -hmm. So you see here when the Roman shade is mounted on the frame or on the outside of the window from this side of it, which is the left picture, you see a gap a gap mm -hmm. between where the fabric is hanging and where the window and the window molding is. That gap is the size of the board onto which the shade is mounted. Mm -hmm. And that board can be any an inch, an inch and a half for a small lift me mechanism to upwards of two and a half, three inches for larger mechanisms. Now, mm -hmm. I, I don't think we're going to get into lift systems necessarily no. here. And we've done episodes on that before. We'll do it again. But I wanted to make sure to mention to you guys that when you mount the shade on the outside of the window, make sure to tell the customer to set the expectations for yourself and her that there will be that gap between the window and the fabric. Yes, that's something that we talk about at length, especially if it's a blackout Bedroom. room. Oh, blackout. <laughs> so we that's a whole that's a whole nother soapbox conversation. But yeah, that, that gap is very important to talk about. And one quick thing that I and I'm glad we went back to this picture that I want to mention when with especially sheer roman shades you're gonna see the guts you're gonna see yeah. the rings and the pickups and the ladders there's no harry potter trick 
that your window treatment workroom can do to hide it, Mm -hmm. you will see it. Yeah. And it's something that when you're going with the sheer Roman, I have, I have a big one in my house. Mm -hmm. I have a semi sheer Roman that we lined again with the voile Mm -hmm. uh, sheer behind it just to give a little level of privacy. And it's about 106 by 65. So there's a lot of pickups. Yeah. Yeah, It's, it's, I have, I have two very big windows that have two big Roman shades. Uh And so, um, it's a lot, it's a large window and you see all those pickups and that's not something that we can avoid. Mm -hmm. So that's some, that's, they're always going to be there. And some people hate them. And so if if, if this is something that you don't want to see, then do not specify the sheer fabric. And then some people are like, yeah, it's great. It's part of the makeup of the shade. It's organic. It's this, that, and the other thing. I'm totally fine with it. In which case, by all means, do a sheer Roman shade and, you know, as long as the expectations are set, that's what we say here all the time. And we have, and we will, as long as the expectations are set and the conversations are had, you can do whatever you want (laughs) and the customer will be happy. Yep. So that was just, just one little PSA that I just wanted to um, point out that Mm -hmm. we, we, we can't, there's, there's nothing that we can do to avoid that. So, yeah. So we do have this other slide of a hobbled Roman shade, but I think we talked about it enough with that striped one. And um, here I have, um, so Stephanie called it London Roman shade. It it really isn't quite because it doesn't have those inverted pleats Pleats. um, on on the sides, exactly. But what it does have is the scoop um, in the center and the little fishtails. And what it is, is the the reason there are fishtails like this, if you guys like this look. So it's kind of a variation. It's a mixture of London and, and relaxed. relaxed. <laughs> yes. If you like those fishy tails um, <laughs> on the sides, what you need to do and ask your workroom, or I'm sure they know, is the first and the last column of rings, they don't get put all the way on the edges the of edge. Roman shade. Mm-hmm. They are set in. And and the distance by which they're set in will be the size of your tail on on each side. side. So so that's how you achieve that. So this is basically if uh, what to, to Vita's point is the London has the pleat, but if you don't want the pleat, but you like the look of the tail, it's just a relaxed Roman shade with tails. Mm-hmm. With tails, exactly. So. That concludes, you guys, our um, quick episode here on Roman Shades 101. Mm-hmm. I'm sure we'll be talking about Roman Shades in the future. We have talked about them in the past, too, in case you ever want to go back and listen to our past episodes. There's a huge library of those available. Mm-hmm. So before we let you go, we have some uh, free goodies that we want to share with you. If you are new to the window treatment um industry or you are just starting out the process of selecting window treatments for your home, please head on over to the Window Works website. Luann wrote uh, a free ebook, Architectural Digest is Incoming, 10 Things uh, You Need to Know About Custom Window Treatments. It's basically like a custom window treatment 101. Sorry, I'm trying to fiddle it. It's like a little mm-hmm. crooked, but it's okay. I think that, yeah, we're going to have to deal. It's, with it. it's Friday. <laughs> and from Vitalia Inc., we also have a free gift for you. It's called 37 and a half window treatment ideas for you to steal, swipe, and use immediately on your next design project. You can get this gift from us at vitaliainc.com. And if you are interested in an awning, Um, because that is the other half of our business here at Window Works, and you have gone through half of the summer realizing, I really need to shade my patio. Well, we have another free ebook, a buying guide, that you can download on uh, the five mistakes that you can avoid um, when buying a quality awning. And if you want to know about all things Luann, and where she is in her Luann world, (laughs) definitely uh, check out her podcast, a well-designed business podcast, where she interviews interior designers and um, the industry partners within the interior design trade. And she has another podcast because one wasn't enough. Uh, So if you are watching this and you are a window treatment retailer, a workroom, I would highly suggest um, downloading window treatments for profit. Luann has, uh, every Monday she drops an episode where she interviews someone in the window treatment industry. And then she also has two recurring 
guest hosts, Madeline McCree, where her 10 minute episode comes out on um, Wednesday. Wednesday. And our girl Vita has Yours her truly. has her episode every Thursday. Vita, tell everybody about what your episode is about. So mine is called Vita's Tip in Ten, which is where I show up in your uh, podcast app every Thursday <laughs> morning with a small but very mighty tip. I try to keep it um, singular in focus. I try not to give you a list of seven things and a three steps for, steps for this and a five elements for that. I just keep Keep it to one thing, one brief, small, but very mighty thing that I want you to take away and um, try to build a better window treatment business with it. Fantastic. And if you are in the New Jersey and New York area and have a Roman shade project that you would love uh, window works to help you on, whether you are a designer or a homeowner, and um, even if you are um, someone out of state, but you have a project here in this area, we would be happy to help you and be your boots on the ground and to help figure out what the best Roman shade solution is for you. And if you are in the Philadelphia area, then hopefully Vitalia Inc. Window Treatments is the right company for you. We are a one-stop shop, a go-to resource, a white glove service, a concierge level service exclusively for for luxury interior designers ready to fly first class in their in the window treatment, custom window treatment world. So please um, DM, PM, call, email, and we'll be happy to support you on your next in, um, window treatment project. Alrighty, everyone. Well, that concludes our episode today, episode number 107, Roman Shade 101. We hope you enjoyed today's episode and uh, took at least one little informational nugget away. Um, and we hope you have a great weekend. <laughs> and we hope you join us next Friday because if it's Friday, it's Window Treatment Friday Live or how we lovingly like to <laughs> refer to it as WTF. Yes. <laughs> you know what it stands for? This one designer wrote to me, she's like, you know what WTF stands for? You should change. And I'm like, Girlfriend, that's the point because anyone who's done window treatments in their life has had a WTF kind of moment. But of course, it's a it's a play on words. It's a window treatment Friday, Friday. <laughs> live. <laughs> live. Yes. All right, everyone. Have a great weekend and thank you so much for joining us. All right. Have a great weekend. Bye bye.